and more college students want Coca-Cola off their canvases. Why? The answer in tonight's Fact Finders report. You're watching the 2005 Emmy Award winner for Best News Desk, the WB11 News at 10. It could be America's favorite soft drink. So why is Coke coming under fire at several college campuses? A Fact Finders report coming your way next. Tonight, one of America's best-known products, Coca-Cola, is getting some very unwelcome attention. Allegations of human rights abuses at Coke bottling plants. Their charges the company absolutely denies, and right now you'll hear why. Peter Thorne is here to explain in his Fact Finders report. Peter? All right, guys, an American classic under fire. Stunning claims against Coca-Cola. You'll hear the accusations and also why the company feels confident the allegations are untrue. Norma Ray. Forget it! Norma Ray. Sally Field's Oscar-winning movie from the 70s. It's the emotional journey of a worker in a North Carolina textile plant fighting to bring in a union. It's fiction, but based on a true story. And in real life, the real Norma Ray got real help from this man, veteran union activist Ray Rogers. Now Rogers is in New York, decades later, hair grayer, but still spoiling for a fight. Rogers has kicked off what may be the toughest battle of his life. This time, his target could not be bigger. He's taking a swing at Coca-Cola. He's accusing the soft drink giant of shocking human rights abuses in Colombia. Are they taking you seriously? They're taking us very seriously. Rogers and a long list of others, some of whom might surprise you, now accusing this American corporate icon of complicity with horrible crimes against union workers in Central America, including the death of union organizer Ysidro Gill, who Rogers says was killed by paramilitary forces who he says were let inside a Coke bottling plant, like this one in Colombia, allegedly by the owners of the plant. Allegations so startling, New York City Council member Hiram Montserrat flew to Colombia on a fact-finding mission to learn more for himself. And here they were basically being threatened uh, with bodily harm and even death uh, by paramilitary groups, allegedly working in conjunction in some places. Uh, with management's uh, knowledge. Rogers blames violent Colombian paramilitary forces working with the knowledge of plant management, he says, using deadly intimidation tactics to keep down wages. I am accusing Coca-Cola of complicity, of murder, torture, and kidnapping of union leaders in Colombia. Many of Rogers' chilling claims are detailed in this federal lawsuit filed against Coca-Cola by the United Steelworkers of America, the International Labor Rights Fund, and alleged victims of anti-union violence in Colombia. But Coke was dismissed from this lawsuit, leaving only the Colombian bottling plants. The court found Coke did not have sufficient ownership or control of its bottlers to be liable. Even so, Rogers and other activists insist Coke has corporate responsibility for its bottlers. They persist in demanding an independent investigation and compensation for the people they call victims. Coca-Cola would not come on camera, but in response to the allegations raised by Ray Rogers and others, they issued a statement which reads in part, quote, the allegations are completely false that the Coca-Cola company and its local Colombian bottling partners may be connected to violence against union workers in Colombia. Two different judicial inquiries have examined these issues and found no evidence of wrongdoing. Despite Coke's strenuous denials, Rogers pushes on, winning allies from campuses to union halls. His organization's no-nonsense website announces what he calls the campaign to stop killer Coke. His grassroots campaign is winning support on a growing number of college campuses like Rutgers, Hofstra, and NYU, hoping to force change in what they believe are Coke's activities by boycotting Coke and costing the company millions in lost profits and bad publicity. Coke says it's aware of and disappointed by recent student boycotts based on what they call inaccuracies that are found online. They need to be held accountable and they need to ensure that their workers' rights are being respected. A number of unions are joining the boycott bandwagon. Coca-Cola could step in and stop this if they wanted to. We'll know we've been successful when the threats of these paramilitary groups stops. While they may not agree completely with Ray Rogers, his allegations, or his tactics, some prominent New York City officials are joining the fight to pressure Coke. Among them, New York City's Comptroller, the city's chief financial officer. We probably have in excess of about $275 million uh, worth of Coca-Cola stock in our portfolios. Thompson told me his chief duty is to protect shareholder value. He's concerned lingering allegations against Coke could hurt the stock. He wants the company to do more to refute the charges. People want an independent investigation right now. Coca-Cola owns a major piece of this company in Colombia. 
Uh, and yes, you'd want them. You know, you know, you have a corporate responsibility. In an emailed statement, Koch told me there has already been an investigation and, quote, a respected independent third party found no instances of anti-union violence or intimidation at bottling plants. Koch has set up its own website where you can read the full report for yourself, kochfacts.org. When he came back to New York, Montserrat issued this damning report, quote, the conclusion that Coca-Cola bears responsibility for the campaign of terror leveled at its workers is unavoidable. In different plants where I spoke to workers and their family members and witnesses who saw beatings going on and specifically were told if you continue your union activity we will kill you. Councilmember Montserrat is not calling for a Coke boycott but he demands a new investigation. This year at Coke shareholders meeting anti-Coke activists all but hijacked the agenda one after another standing up hurling angry words at Coke CEO Neville Isdell. The allegations are not true. Contrary to what's been alleged, we have a solid relationship with organized labor in Colombia. But the pressure on Coke is not bubbling away. The fact remains there are too many witnesses and it's just too much evidence. If I were Coca-Cola, I'd want to protect my reputation. And to repeat, Coca-Cola insists allegations of complicity with violence are not true that an investigation confirms Coke has done nothing wrong and the company says right now it is working with colleges and universities to address their concerns regarding operations in Colombia. Now if you have a suggestion for a future story please log on to WB11.com and click the link for the fact finders. All right, All right. Great. Thanks, Thank you very much Peter.